imagine a space that is expanding at an incredible rate. A volume of one meter cube becomes that of the observable universe in just one billionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second. That space is an inflaton field. Like any other quantum fields, it is subject to quantum fluctuations. Most of these are small, but because time is infinite, fluctuations large enough to destabilize locally the inflaton field will occur. And where this happens, the crazy expansion weakens. One of these fluctuations gave birth to our universe. Space-time suddenly appears from nowhere, containing an incredible amount of energy. Space expands and cools down. The energy condenses into elementary particles, gluons, quarks, electrons, photons. A fraction of a second later, the quarks glue themselves into baryons, such as a neutron and a proton. Protons and neutrons pair up and give birth to small nuclei, like hydrogen, deuterium, helium, and a little lithium. After 380,000 years, these nuclei met electrons and said, let's build atoms together. So atoms were born, and light was freed to flow in this newly transparent universe. The distribution of matter was uniform, but not perfectly. Small fluctuations of density of around one thousandth of a percent acted as seeds for gravity to act upon. Soon, the gas clouds composed of hydrogen and helium atoms collapsed and gave birth to the first stars. These were huge and short-lived, just a few million years. More stars formed from their remains and coalesced into galaxies. When new stars like our Sun were born, and around these stars, planets formed. You know the rest of the story? On the surface of some of these planets began a new branch of chemistry, biology. That is a beautiful picture of how our universe came to be, don't you think? It is based on the observations we made when looking at the sky. But it has been a few decades now that we know that these observations account only for 5% of what makes our universe. We are basing all of our science on just 5% of what is. We are bound to miss some stuff. So, what are the other 95%? When the universe was born, it experienced an extremely powerful expansion force for a short time. It gained an expansion speed. But this expansion should have been slowing down. Yeah. Gravity, originating from the matter inside the universe, provides an inward force on it. So the expansion should be decelerating. And it's not. Instead, it is accelerating. To explain this, there must be another force involved. One that opposes gravity. And this dark force must be triggered by an energy of some kind. We do not know what it is, so we call it dark energy and it accounts for about 70% of everything in our universe. And that's not all. You see, gravity is triggered by the presence of mass and energy. On the larger scales, like that of a galaxy, or of a galaxy cluster, or even on the scale of the whole universe, gravity seems too strong compared to the matter and energy we can actually account for. The only way to make sense of the observations is to suggest the existence of another type of matter that only interacts gravitationally. We can't see it because it is not affected by the other forces of nature, and it doesn't appear to interact very much with any known particle. That's why we call it dark matter. The fascinating mystery behind dark matter is what we are going to explore in future episodes. We will see together how we can detect dark matter by looking at the dynamics of a galaxy, by understanding gravitational lensing and by looking deep into the cosmic background radiation. So if you haven't already, it's time for you to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. There is some amazing physics coming up. In the meantime, I'll see you soon for another episode of Physics Made Easy. Ciao!